بالله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا This is your brother Abdul Wahab Salim with the tafsir of Surah Al-Hujurat. We are coming now to a close on the episodes of Surah Al-Hujurat. We looked at earlier on the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he told us لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله Do not prefer yourself over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And we looked at the commandment in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to lower our volumes. لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي do not raise your volume above the volume of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We looked at many other commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within these verses. اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن Stay away from lots and lots of evil thoughts. لا يسخر قوم من قوم عزاء يكونوا خيرا منهم. Do not mock uh, one another. Do, a group of men shouldn't be mocking one. Uh, an, another group and another group of men shouldn't be mocking the first group and the group of women shouldn't be mocking the group of women and so on and so forth. All of these commandments, they're now coming to a beautiful close. They're now coming to a beautiful finish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concluding the surah. The last passage that we looked at is when the Bedouin Arabs that had come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Banu Asad, they had said, وَقَالَتِ الْأَعْرَابُ آمَنَّا They started to say, we are believing, we believe, we are believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not make these tall claims, you are this way and you are that way. Right, even today, we have people that make very tall claims. It may not be necessarily about the belief, right, because we pretty much give that particular credit to everybody. There are people that make tall claims saying that we are the saved sect. We are that group of people who have been saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In reality, the companions of Rasulullah salawatu rabbi wa tasalimu alayh, they were always fearful of even hypocrisy upon their souls, let alone them making a tall claim saying that we are from amongst the saved sect, even though Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had explicitly said, they are the people that are upon that which me and my companions are upon. Even then, they would be not sure about themselves and we make very, very tall claims. And this, these ayat are teaching us not to make those tall claims. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us the conclusion of the surah. He says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Throughout you were saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, do this. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, don't do that. Oh, who you believe, do this. Oh, who you believe, don't do that. This was a common theme, right? Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let me sum up iman for you. I told you about how you're supposed to be as believers. I told you those people that came and proclaimed belief and they weren't truly believers. Now I'm going to sum up the concept of iman for you. It is as follows. Iman is that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and these two factors are mentioned and you're reminded of them many many times during the day starting with the adhan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Similarly we say the same claim in iqamah then when we get towards the end of prayer we say it again and so we're reminded throughout the day. And when we finish our prayer, we say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. We're reminded again and again throughout the day to make this claim of there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we all need to have our iman reiterated. Okay? So what does it mean to say that I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What it means is that I believe in Allah, so I'm going to be doing things only for Allah. I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not going to... Take my worship and, and give it to someone else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or associate somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this worship. This is not something I will do. And this is why Allah commands us in the Quran saying, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say that my prayer, say that my sacrifice, say that my life, and say that my death are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ They are for Allah, the Lord of the universe. So when you are saying, آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ I have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are making this tall claim 
which basically comes out to say that you are ready to give up everything for the sake of Allah. So Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says believers are those that do what? They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amanu billah. Wa rasulihi. And also they believed in the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This can all be summed up in reality in the belief in Allah because the belief in Allah necessitates the belief also in the messengers. Because the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that there is some guidance that Allah will be giving. And that guidance must be coming to us in some form. And there must be someone that is sharing that guidance to the rest of humanity. And that is Rasul. So that means that if we believe in Allah, we naturally believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. We believe in Allah. We believe in Rasulullah. Now what happens? ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Then they don't become doubtful. Meaning what? Then as time passes, their belief doesn't get rusty. They remain believers. And the way they remain believers is by implementing all of those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh, who you believe, do this and don't do that. Do this and don't do that. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِيَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَسَعُوا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ When you are called to prayer on the day of Jumu'ah, then go to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Oh, who you believe, fear Allah. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِ Oh, who you believe, stay far, far away from evil thoughts. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِّنْ قَوْمٍ Don't let a group of people make fun of another group of people. لَا تُقَدِّمُوا بَيْنَ يَدَيِ اللَّهِ Don't put yourself as a preferred individual over Allah and His Messenger. لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِي Lower your volumes before the volume of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So every time Allah is saying, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This is our opportunity to test our beliefs. Have we actually believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger? The test of that is that as time passes, they don't become doubtful. Meaning that no matter how long goes by, they remain on belief and the way they do that is they implement the manifestations of belief that are mentioned and scattered throughout the Qur'an time in and time again. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Then they don't end up having doubts. Because a person may be a believer for a moment, but he doesn't really correct his way. Right? And as he doesn't get correct, correct his way, then that shelter and the, in, the insulation of belief that we were talking about, that goes away. So remember a believer is like that date we were talking about? So when your insulation of Iman, your actions go away, then your date becomes unpeeled. And when your date is becoming unpeeled, then you are subject to any problem and any filth and any dirt that could come and get stuck to your date, into your moist belief, right? So what we do is we continue to implement the manifestations of belief so we stay far, far away from doubt. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا And they also, they also struggle. But with what? They struggle with their wealth. Meaning what? If it comes time to give something up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give it up. Right? And if they don't, then they're following the path of shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر شيطان he promises you of poverty and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says والله يعيدكم مغفرة منه وفضلا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a promise of what? of مغفرة forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as well as فضل as well just as well as an increase and a positive influx in wealth Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said ma naqasa ma'lum min sadaqah that wealth doesn't decrease if you give sadaqah if you truly believe in this then you will follow the guidance that is within it if you truly understand that every time you give up something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give it back to you in multiple and Allah will give it back to you with an increase and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more and more of it then we would not stop to when, when, when it comes time to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why he says over here وَجَاهَدُوا they struggle with their wealth they struggle as in they they give these this wealth up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa anfusihim. Wa jahadu bi amwalihim wa anfusihim. So this jihad, this struggle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here, it's with our time, it's with our body, it's with our sleep, it's with every comfort that has been given to us. We struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if that means giving up some of those comforts. Wa jahadu. بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ And they struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their wealth and also with their bodies. فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't stress the importance of this word over here. فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ You know why? 
Because in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we struggle. We struggle in the path of Allah, not in our own paths, not because of ourselves, not because of money, not because of other factors. He already told you to give up the money. He already said, Jahadu. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ And then they did jihad, they struggled in the way of Allah through their wealth. So it's not about the money, right? Even if you get the money, you don't get the money, you still struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you get the comfort, you don't get the comfort, you still struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is in the path of Allah. This is not in our own path. Sometimes we struggle. We do things that apparently seem for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what do we want to do? We want to basically just get our names out there. We want to become famous and glorious. We want to be called this and that. We want to be people that have their mentions left behind. We want to have a masjid named after us, a school named after us, a street named after us. We want to have money that we give up for the sake of Allah so we can take a picture with that nice big paycheck that has our name engraved in, inside of it. We want to go and give a lecture or talk or other things of such sort and we just want our names out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that their jihad, their struggle is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Fi sabilillah, it occurs because of Allah. That's why time in and time out we're taught to say Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every action that we do is actually for Allah and not for ourselves. Because when we do it for Allah, it lasts. The barakah of the name of Allah remains. And if we do it for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be because of we're trying to show off, whether it be because we're trying to become famous, gain wealth, gain power, gain strength, dominion, whatever it may be, it's not going to last. If it's for Allah, it will. It will remain. And that's why when Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Malik had written a book by the name of Muatta, Muatta Imam Malik. And many of the other scholars of his time has all, have, had also return, written what is called the Muatta'at. And the word Muatta simply means something that has been made easy. Right? At that time, the Muhaddithin, they had to travel. The traditionists, they had to travel from a city to another, a country to another, in order for them to gather the traditions. So Imam Malik, he gathered a lot of the traditions of Rasulullah, about 2,000 odd traditions, and he placed them into one small book and called it the Muatta. The book that's been made easy. Why? Because anybody wants a hadith, come over here, I have them all gathered together in this. Read this book to me, you've got it. Right? So other people wrote muwatta'at as well. Other people wrote the books that were made easy, that were making the lives of people easy as well. The scholars, some of them, they said, Malik, and Malik wasn't even considered the greatest of scholars at that time. They said, Malik, there's other people that have written muwatta'at as well. Why do you care to write a muwatta for yourself? Imam Malik said that, Later on, you'll find out which one of these was done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, we only have one famous muatta, even though there are some other ones that have lasted as well over centuries. But the one that everybody knows is the one that was done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why, even when Imam Malik was offered by one of the governors to take this book and make it literally the, the book that everybody goes back to in terms of law, Islamic law, right? To make it literally a... A, a book that is printed and reprinted and so on and so forth by the government. And it is the way that every Muslim should live their lives. He said, I, you know, they had hadith and I had hadith. So don't officialize my book. It's canonized, it's written down. If people want to benefit for it, from it, alhamdulillah. So he had the humility to take a back step even when he was getting an offer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the muwatta of Imam Malik one of the primary books that are studied in Islam and they've been being studied forever and ever and for many, many centuries and they'll continue, it will continue to be studied. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease. So we do things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ And if people do that for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these are the truthful people. Allah continues and He says to these Bedouin Arabs that had made this claim that we are believers, just like we make our claims, we are on the sunnah, we're on this, and they're on the bid'ah, they're on the innovations, they're on that, and we're on this, and all sorts of claims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ Are you telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of your situation and how you how good you are in terms of belief, or how bad you are, or how bad other people are? Are you telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of that? Right? Are you telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you really think Allah needs to know what you think about yourself? Allah knows what you don't even know about yourself. What you've forgotten about yourself. Allah knows all of those things. So don't come to Allah telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I got it all right. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to hear that. He wants you to humble yourself on a daily basis and say, إِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. Because you don't know if you're on the straight path. قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ Do you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of your religiosity? وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah knows that which is within the heavens. مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ And the word ma is one of those articles that is used to generalize within the Arabic language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Allah knows everything within the heavens. Everything within the universe. When we say samawat, some people they tra translate it to mean the skies, right? A samawat, the word sama simply means something that's high. So everything you see beyond the ground, that is called a sama. When you start looking up, it's all sama. So basically Allah is referring to all of the galaxies, the entire universe, everything that is within this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is someone that knows of this. And then Allah says, وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And Allah knows everything that is on the earth and also that is inside of the earth, as Allah literally says. So even the treasures that Allah has buried within the ground or treasures that people ended up burying, treasure chests and so on and so forth over centuries, Allah knows where they are. The gold coins that some pirates, they gathered and they buried somewhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it, something that someone le had left behind, right, in a certain mountain, in a certain cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where all of that is. Allah knows whatever is within the land. وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ And by the way, from now Allah is going to be talking about His knowledge. Why? Because now we need to recognize His knowledge and appreciate His knowledge. Allah told us to do many things. Some of those things are very subtle, they're related to the heart. They're matters of the heart. They're matters of us correcting our heart, our way of perceiving other people that are from other cultures. We may not be abrupt about it, but if it's in the heart and there's some wrong perceptions, Allah recognizes that. So now Allah is reminding you of His vast knowledge. And Allah will continue to do that right till the end of the surah. So now Allah says, وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah is intrinsically knowledgeable of everything. And the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very great. But we'll talk more about the knowledge in a minute. Now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded the Bedouin Arabs and also reminded us in extension of the fact that He knows everything and that we shouldn't be making tall claims about our religiosity, I'm religious. Right? Sometimes people ask you this question, are you religious? When did you become religious? Say, I had a spiritual enlightenment, but you don't know if you're religious. You can't make a claim like that, I'm religious. That's not something to say. Do you tell Allah of your religiosity? You can't tell people I'm religious. Right? Because only Allah knows which aspect of your religion is being, be, being accepted. Be, say something like, I have had a spiritual enlightenment. I wish to get connected to Allah spiritually. But don't say I'm religious. That's a tall claim. Allah says, do you tell Allah of the fact that you're religious? Right? يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا They... What do they do? They think they, that they've laid you under an obligation because of what? Because of the fact that they've accepted Islam. They've laid you under no such obligation. قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Do not try to, to lay me under this obligation that you think, that you suppose, because of the fact that you've accepted Islam. بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا Alaykum. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places you under an obligation. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and He says, An hadakum, because of the fact that He guided you. So whenever you think you've put, some, put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His messenger, His deen, or a masjid that you work for, or a society that you work for, or a social service that you work for, you think you've put other people under obligation because you're volunteering for them? Do not do that. Don't think you're putting anybody under obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ Rather, Allah is putting you under an obligation and that is of what? That is the fact that He has given you the guidance to do that. He has given you the guidance to do that. إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَوْنٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِلْفَتَى فَأَوَّلُ مَا يَجْنِي عَلَيْهِ اجْتِهَادُهُ If there wasn't to be help for a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if he tries, then this particular attempt and trying of whatever he wants to try, this will be the way that he'll gain failure. You're looking at trying something out and you, you basically place all of the means and you place all of the eggs in this basket, right? And in fact, you don't even place all your eggs in one basket, you get multiple baskets and you place your eggs 
you know, on, scattered on all of these different baskets. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to tilt the baskets, all of the eggs will, eggs will go down the drain. Right? That's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we always go back and recognize that this is a virtue from Allah, that we have been given guidance. بَلِلَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So long as you are true believers. If you are true believers, then you'll recognize that this is actually guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is the final verse in Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ, غي... إن الله يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the hidden things within the heavens and the earth. What does that mean? The hidden things within the heavens and the earth? Allah already spoke of His knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. But now Allah wants to finish this surah off with this. Why? Because it's all about the knowledge of Allah. If you recognize that Allah has this vast knowledge of everything, then the implementation of all the practices that were told before it becomes easy. Because you know that if you don't implement it, Allah sees it. You know if you even think about doing something wrong within your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it, of it, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully sums this up by saying, Allah knows what? Allah knows the unseen things within the heavens and the earth. Before he said he knows everything within the heavens and the earth, right? So one may think, well, he knows everything that's apparent. But then there's always hidden secrets related to everything. When, whenever you explore a subject, a concept, an idea, when you look at an animal, an insect, a whatever, reptile, and you explore it more and more and more, you find hidden secrets that you did not know about and you become fond of it. Allah, and even within the heavens, same sort of idea, the more you travel, right? Space tourism nowadays, the more you travel, the more you'll notice things that you had no idea about and you'll recognize the hidden secrets of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I don't have to search for them. I don't even know, I don't know just the things that are apparent. I know even beyond that, I know the unseen things within the heavens and the earth. So I know the apparent, obviously. But I also know the unseen as well. What more do you want? This is my knowledge. This is my knowledge and you still don't fix up your act. This is my knowledge and you recognize the fact that I understand you just that well and you still don't fix yourself up when I tell you, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, do such and such. Inna Allaha ya'lamu ghayb as samawat. This is my knowledge when I tell you that you've been created from, from just a pair, male and a female, and then we've just made you into tribes and, and civilizations so that you may get to know one another and you pretend that that's the reason, but deep down inside you've got something against the Indians and the Indians have got something against the Pakistanis and the Saudis have got something against the Yemenis and the Yemenis have got something against against the Saudis, and this will continue. Even if we say at the end of the day, we're all brothers, we're all Muslims, but Allah knows what's deep down within our heart. Allah wants us to correct what's within our heart. He's reminding us of the knowledge of the unseen. Allah's knowledge is as follows. يَعْلَمُ مَا كَان وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ وَمَا سَيَكُونْ he knows that which was, and that which will be. وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَوْ كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونْ And that which wasn't, and that which will not be, if it were to be, how it would have been. This is the knowledge of Allah. Allah's knowledge is, as Allah says, وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا Not a leaf falls off a tree in the entire world and universe, except that He knows the leaf is falling. Allah's knowledge is as such, that even the things that you see apparently, the leaf is falling. Why is it falling? Allah knows the reason why it fell as well. Because He knows the غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He knows the hidden secrets within the heavens and the earth. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And now He brings it back to the action, because this surah was about actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah is watching as you do. And Allah is watching what you do. Allah is all seeing of what you do. You see, when we know that someone knows something, we sometimes still have the audacity to do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you of His vast knowledge. And then He said that it's not just knowledge, I am actually seeing what you're doing. As I am speaking right now, and you're watching, and people that will be editing these videos and so on, and so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching all of this. This is a process that is known to Allah, and Allah is seeing as well. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a tawfiq, to practice, to convey. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.